Hi, and welcome to our channel. Pock a computer, camera, gaming device, and phone on the side. Smartphones are real all-rounders, and it's hard to imagine everyday life without them. To show you the best phones that are smaller than 6.5 inches, we have evaluated 15,865 tests. Big, bigger at the biggest. Not today. Even if many like a large screen on a cell phone, there comes a time when it's enough. That's why everything today revolves around smartphones with a maximum size of 6.5 inches. If you like the video already, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss any of our other upcoming comparisons, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the notification bell. Now comes our ranking. We start with an overall score of 4.2 out of 5 stars with the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G. At the time of the test, the price was around $650. Flagship on a savings course. Strengths. Very high performance level. Strong display with adaptive refresh rate of up to 120 Hz. Up-to-date interfaces. Still strong cameras. Weaknesses. Back only made of plastic. No accessories included. Memory not expandable. New Year, New Galaxy S models. Samsung has been punctual like clockwork since 2009. The smartphone giant also presents a new generation of the popular flagship series in 2021. The name fits the year of release. Many had actually expected the Galaxy S30 as the new name. As with the S20 generation, the device will be available in three variants. The base model, as well as a plus and an ultra variant. The base model is still comparatively compact and offers a 6.2-inch display. The front-facing camera is still placed in the form of a hole in the center of the upper edge. The resolution is about on the same level as Full HD, and Samsung's own Super OMOLED panel is used again. In previous years, the Galaxy models had already resolutions in the 1440p range, which is why it seems like a step backwards. But this supposed downgrade has a reason. The display offers a refresh rate of 120Hz. This not only makes all animations much smoother, but can also provide a clear added value in games. The frame rate is adaptive and thus automatically adjusts to the displayed content. It goes down to 48Hz for static pictures, which saves battery power. The back of the S21 is made of plastic, which is a bit sobering for a premium smartphone. At least the camera module is nicely framed in the casing, and color-coordinated with the rest of the casing. When it comes to the chipset, it again boils down to different solutions, depending on the region. A part of the S21 lineup gets the brand new Snapdragon 875 processor, and some regions, including Germany, get devices with Samsung's own Exynos 2100. The differences were marginal in the predecessor generations, but the Snapdragons are somewhat more performant, according to experience. However, the high-end smartphone will certainly not lack computing power. The working memory is 8GB in both models, and 256GB of storage is available for $50 US dollars more. The chipset is also accompanied by support for 5G mobile, Bluetooth 5.1, and Wi-Fi 6. The new Wi-Fi 6E standard is also used here for the first time. This offers an additional 6GHz radio band which should be an enormous advantage in areas with many WLANs on the other two radio bands. Suitable routers are still a rarity. The technical aspects show that the S21 takes a step backwards in terms of battery capacity. 4000 mAh instead of the 4500 mAh of the previous generation suggest a reduction in battery life. However, the new chipset is currently more energy efficient than the predecessors and Samsung has probably also improved the energy management in the software. Added to that are the optimizations of Android 11, which is the basis for Samsung's One UI operating system, and the savings from the adaptive refresh rate. Thus, the runtime will presumably remain on the same, overall solid level. Instead of megapixel overkill, the device relies on a main camera with 12 megapixels, but with excellent sensor technology. Significant progress compared to the S20 camera, which also offers 12 megapixels, is not to be expected. There is also an ultra-wide camera with 12 megapixels and a telephoto lens with 64 megapixels. 
4K videos with 60 FPS are possible as well as 8K recordings at 30 FPS. The front and rear cameras can also record videos simultaneously, which could be exciting for vloggers and Instagram aficionados. Those who have even higher demands on the camera quality will then rather find what they are looking for with the S21 Ultra, which comes with a much better main camera as well as two optical zoom strengths. The S21 boasts a slightly lower entry-level price than in previous years. However, the price level remains the same at 850 instead of 899 US dollars. The trade-offs are bitter, a plastic back instead of glass, which is unworthy of a flagship model like its sister model S21 Plus 5G, and no accessories, similar to Apple's iPhone 12. Samsung has also finally buried the memory card slot. We continue with an overall score of 4.2 out of 5 stars that we have determined for the Samsung Galaxy S22. At the time of the test, the price was around $850. The new Galaxy brings little that is new. Strengths Bright and colorful OMOLED display with dynamic frequency. Finally, a high quality glass back. Usual good cameras. Weaknesses Battery has been reduced to 3700 milliamp hours and charges comparatively sluggishly, 25 watts. Cameras without real innovations slash special features. Memory not expandable. Weak scope of delivery. Simple model update or real innovation. This real question could be asked when looking at Samsung's brand new flagship. Virtually almost nothing has changed compared to the predecessor. However, the back is now made of glass and no longer comes in plain plastic, which is actually self-evident for the price. And it is high as usual with 849 US dollars for 128 gigabytes or 899 US dollars for 256 gigabytes for the market launch on March 11th, 2022. In addition, the entire casing has become a bit slimmer overall. Downside, the battery shrinks from 4000 milliamp hours to 3700 milliamp hours in the meantime. However, this does not mean the battery runtime will be shorter because the new in-house Exynos 2200 chip was manufactured in a 4NM process, which should result in an increased energy efficiency compared to the predecessor. Thus, the S22 should last about as long without a power outlet as its predecessor. Hardly anything has changed in the display. The familiar Full HD resolution with a dynamic 120 Hz is used. During certain activities, the refresh rate can be lower to save energy. Unfortunately, Samsung has changed its spec sheets afterwards. The display apparently only supports 48 to 120 Hz and not 10 to 120 Hz as it was previously stated. This is very disappointing. On the back is the camera module, already known from the predecessor consisting of three lenses, wide angle, ultra wide angle and telephoto for the triple zoom impression. The maximum resolution is 50 megapixels, and Samsung promises to have revised the software for improved low light performance. Unfortunately, you can only have two memory variants to choose from, but up to eight color variants. The device cannot use memory cards, and the scope of delivery is unfortunately weak for this price, as is now common. The Galaxy S22 can change its battery with up to 25 watts, which is very low compared to other manufacturers. A power adapter is not included. By the way, we have linked all the smartphones below in the video description for even more details. Moving on, we continue with the overall score of 4.4 out of 5 stars, which we determined for the OnePlus Nord 2 5G. At the time of the test, the price was around $360. The flagship destroyer goes one better. Strengths First class price performance ratio. Attractive OMOLED display with 90 Hz. High end chipset ensures strong computing power. Good main camera with optical image stabilization. Weaknesses Not waterproof. Memory not expandable. 
the Nord was already a furious entry into the mid-range for OnePlus, which currently topped our mid-range best list for a long time after 22 reviews with an average score of 1.4. With the second iteration, OnePlus wants to work even more on the series' biggest strength, the price-performance ratio. The Nord 2 5G once again offers a 6.4-inch OMOLED screen with a smooth 90 Hz, which is only marginally behind the screens of the current flagships. The main camera uses the same technology that was already convincing in the OnePlus 9, a device that is currently almost twice as expensive as the Nord 2 5G. Great pictures are guaranteed, also because the optical image stabilization compensates for one or two shakes. An ultra-wide lens for landscape shots and a support lens for depth information are available as additional cameras. The more or less useless macro camera for the predecessor is missing, but is not really missed. The innards are controlled by the latest top chipset from MediaTek. It is not quite as powerful as the Snapdragon 888, which is used in current high-level devices, but it handles every task with ease. The chipset also shines with good energy efficiency, which ensures long run times in combination with the 4500 mAh battery. The included 65W charging adapter can fully recharge the device in half an hour. The Android derivative Oxygen OS is used as the software interface. It is known for extremely good performance and is quite intuitively designed. However, there is one small drawback at launch. The 90Hz refresh rate is only used in a few games so far. OnePlus still has to and will improve this. Two storage variants are available in the OnePlus store. The variant with 8GB of working memory and 128GB of hard drive costs and affordable US$399, US while one with 12GB of RAM and 256GB of hard drive and US$499 US is more in the upper class territory. However, the additional investment in the large version is still worth considering, since memory expansion via SD card is not possible in this device. Our conclusion. Of course, every product has its own strengths and weaknesses, so everyone should of course decide for themselves which smartphone suits them best, and of course their own wallet. We have linked all the products in the video description for more details. Have you already decided? Or do you already have one of these products at home? Then we would be happy if you let us know which device you prefer, and above all, why. I hope that we could help you a little deciding on your purchase. And maybe you can tell us in the comments which product you like best, and which one you might have already decided on. We also have many other comparison videos, just like this one, featuring many different products at many different price points, so consider having a look. Also, please leave a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. That would really help us and the channel. Thanks for watching and see you very soon. Goodbye.